Robert De Niro, renowned for his unmatched talent on screen, has clinched two prestigious Oscars. Yet, his life's journey has been anything but serene, marked by the tumultuous trials familiar. Amidst legal battles, turbulent relationships, and profound personal grief, the iconic Raging Bull protagonist has confronted a cascade of adversities. While De Niro's professional demeanor may not be challenging, the narrative of his life unveils a turbulent odyssey filled with hardship. Join us to learn about the tragedies that took place in Robert De Niro's life. You may not know this, but Robert De Niro Jr. actually shares a complex relationship with his father, Robert De Niro Sr., a distinguished American artist. His father, known for his evocative and introspective paintings, passed away on May 3, 1993, leaving behind a legacy that transcended the boundaries of artistic expression. Following his father's death, Robert Jr. embarked on a journey to honor his father's memory and shed light on his artistic brilliance. In 2014, he played a pivotal role in the creation of the documentary Remembering the Artist Robert De Niro Sr., a heartfelt tribute that celebrated the life and work of the esteemed painter. Through this documentary, Robert Jr. sought to immortalize his father's contributions to the art world, ensuring that his talent would continue to inspire generations to come. However, amidst the celebration of his father's artistic legacy, Robert Jr. found himself grappling with the enigmatic persona his father had maintained throughout his life. It wasn't until 2019 that a revelation surfaced shedding new light on Robert Sr.'s inner struggles and personal journey. The Guardian reported the discovery of a series of journals left behind by the late artist, containing intimate accounts of his mental health battles and revelations about his sexuality. For Robert Jr., the discovery of these journals was both intriguing and emotionally challenging. Expressing his eagerness to delve into his father's innermost thoughts, he admitted to feeling a sense of apprehension about confronting the truths concealed within the pages. In an interview with British GQ, he confessed, I'm anxious to read them. I'll read them when it feels right. But at the moment, that's how I'm dealing with it. The actor's candid remarks reflect the complexity of his relationship with his father, characterized by a mixture of admiration, curiosity, and unresolved emotions. Robert Jr. acknowledged the inherent barriers that existed between them, lamenting the lack of open communication about certain aspects of his father's life. In a candid interview with British GQ, Robert Jr. peeled back the layers of his familial dynamics, revealing a poignant narrative of missed opportunities and unspoken sentiments. The actor's introspection delved into the heart of his regrets, highlighting the poignant absence of meaningful discussions between father and son. We didn't have one discussion as father and son discussing art or anything like that, Robert Jr. confessed, laying bare the emotional distance that permeated their relationship. Despite their shared passion for the arts, a chasm existed between them, preventing them from forging the deep connections that transcend mere filial bonds. It was a silence that echoed with unspoken yearning, a longing for understanding and acceptance that remained unfulfilled. In acknowledging the void that lingered between them, Robert Jr. confronted the universal truth that many fathers and sons grapple with. The fleeting nature of time, coupled with the demands of life, often obscures the opportunity for genuine connection— it's a realization that stirs a potent mix of regret and longing, prompting contemplation on what could have been. But probably a lot of fathers and sons don't do that, Robert Jr. mused, recognizing the commonality of his experience. In this shared sentiment lies a poignant acknowledgement of the universal human experience, where the quest for intimacy and connection transcends individual circumstances. It's a reminder that vulnerability knows no bounds, touching the lives of all who dare to confront their deepest truths. Robert De Niro faced a formidable adversary in October 2003 when it was revealed that he had been diagnosed with prostate cancer. 
The news sent shockwaves through the entertainment industry, prompting an outpouring of concern and support for the beloved star. Confirmation of De Niro's diagnosis came from his agent, who revealed that the actor had embarked on a journey of treatment and recovery. Despite the daunting nature of his illness, there was a glimmer of hope in the prognosis. Cancer had been detected at an early stage, thanks to De Niro's commitment to regular checkups and proactive health care measures. This timely intervention proved to be a lifeline, offering De Niro a fighting chance against the disease. A statement from the star's publicist underscored the importance of vigilant monitoring, emphasizing the crucial role played by De Niro's personnel, health care program in detecting cancer early. It was a testament to the actor's unwavering dedication to his well-being, a commitment that ultimately proved instrumental in his battle against prostate cancer. For De Niro, the journey toward recovery was marked by resilience and determination. He sought treatment at New York City's renowned Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, renowned for its cutting-edge therapies and compassionate care. Surrounded by a team of skilled medical professionals, De Niro embarked on a rigorous treatment regimen, confronting the disease head-on with unwavering resolve. The road to recovery was not without its challenges. Production on various projects, including the 2005 film Hide and Seek, was temporarily halted as De Niro focused on his health and well-being. However, true to his indomitable spirit, the actor persevered, determined to overcome the obstacles that stood in his path. According to a report by Reuters in 2007, Fireman's Fund Insurance Capru filed a lawsuit against De Niro, seeking a staggering $1.8 million in damages. The insurance company alleged that De Niro had failed to disclose vital information about his health when signing a health certificate on October 10, 2003. Specifically, it was claimed that De Niro had not disclosed the fact that he had recently undergone a prostate biopsy, information that would have been deemed critical in assessing his eligibility for insurance coverage. The implications of this alleged non-disclosure were significant. Fireman's Fund Insurance Cumberd argued that had they been made aware of De Niro's medical history, they would have reconsidered their decision to provide insurance coverage for hide-and-seek. As a result of the undisclosed information, production on the film was reportedly postponed for four months, incurring substantial costs for the motion picture production company. In response to the lawsuit, De Niro vehemently denied any wrongdoing, asserting that he had been unaware of his cancer diagnosis at the time of signing the health certificate. The actor maintained that he had not received confirmation of his diagnosis until October 15, 2003, five days after signing the document. He contended that he had acted in good faith and had not intentionally misled the insurance company. The legal battle that ensued was fraught with complexities and legal intricacies. De Niro's legal team moved to dismiss the lawsuit, arguing that there was no basis for the allegations leveled against the actor. Despite the contentious nature of the dispute, a judge ultimately ruled in De Niro's favor, dismissing the case in 2008. The bond between Robert De Niro and Marlon Brando transcended the silver screen, forged through their shared passion for acting and mutual respect for each other's craft. Their collaboration in the 2001 film The Score served as a testament to their undeniable chemistry as they brought their respective talents to the forefront alongside fellow stars Edward Norton and Angela Bassett. The Score provided audiences with a rare opportunity to witness two cinematic titans sharing the screen, their performances imbued with a depth and intensity that only seasoned actors of their caliber could deliver. De Niro and Brando's dynamic portrayal of complex characters captivated audiences and solidified their status as legends in the world of cinema. However, their connection extended beyond the score, reaching back decades to their iconic roles in the Godfather films. While Brando immortalized the role of Don Vito Corleone in the original installment, De Niro stepped into the character's shoes in The Godfather Part II, delivering a mesmerizing performance that earned him critical acclaim and an Academy Award.
The parallel between their portrayals of Don Vito Corleone further deepened the bond between De Niro and Brando, as they shared a profound connection through their interpretation of this iconic character. Their performances served as a testament to their shared reverence for the craft of acting, each bringing their unique interpretation to the role while paying homage to the other's legacy. When news of Marlon Brando's passing reverberated through the entertainment industry on July 1, 2004, Robert De Niro was among those deeply affected by the loss. For De Niro, Brando was not only a colleague but also a mentor and inspiration, a towering figure whose influence had shaped his own career in countless ways. In a poignant reflection shared with British GQ in 2019, De Niro offered a glimpse into the depth of his feelings for his late colleague, shedding light on his enduring reverence for the iconic actor. Recalling his attendance at Brando's memorial, De Niro recounted a moment of profound poignancy as he beheld an image of his former co-star in a frail state, confined to a wheelchair and visibly emaciated. It was a sight that stirred a deep sense of empathy within De Niro evoking feelings of sadness and compassion for the legendary actor who had once commanded the screen with such commanding presence. I felt bad for Marlon, De Niro confessed, his voice tinged with melancholy as he reflected on Brando's struggles with weight and health. Despite Brando's desire to shed the excess pounds that had accumulated over the years, De Niro noted with a heavy heart that the revered actor had been unable to achieve his goal. However, fate had dealt a cruel hand, as illness ultimately led to Brando's dramatic weight loss in his final days. The empathy and compassion expressed by De Niro underscored the depth of his connection to Brando, revealing a tender-heartedness that belied his tough exterior. Despite the passage of time and the cessation of their professional collaboration, De Niro's admiration for Brando remained undiminished, a testament to the lasting impact that the legendary actor had left on him. He was so great, De Niro remarked, his voice tinged with admiration and reverence. In those simple words lay a profound tribute to Brando's talent and intellect, qualities that had earned him the admiration of actors across generations. To De Niro and his contemporaries, Brando was more than just a fellow actor. He was a paragon of excellence, a master of his craft whose brilliance transcended the boundaries of time and space. In October 2018, Robert De Niro found himself thrust into the spotlight in a chilling and harrowing manner as reports emerged that he had been targeted with a pipe bomb. The incident sent shockwaves through the entertainment industry and beyond underscoring the dangerous repercussions of political divisiveness and rhetoric. The ominous discovery came amidst a wave of similar incidents targeting prominent political figures and critics of then-President Donald Trump. Time reported that while one suspicious package was sent directly to De Niro, two others addressed to Joe Biden, the future president of the United States, were intercepted before reaching their intended destination. The package addressed to De Niro's Tribeca office sent shockwaves through the community as authorities swiftly responded to the threat. Upon inspection, the package was identified as containing a suspicious device, prompting immediate action by law enforcement agencies. It was quickly transported to the NYPD's bomb disposal facility, where experts worked tirelessly to neutralize the potential threat. The attempted attack on De Niro was widely perceived as a direct consequence of his vocal criticism of then-President Trump. The actor's unwavering condemnation of Trump's policies and rhetoric had made him a lightning road for controversy, drawing the ire of political opponents and freeing elements alike. De Niro's unapologetic stance against Trump was epitomized during his appearance at the Tony Awards in June of that year. In a moment of defiance and impassioned protest, the actor seized the opportunity to address the audience with a clear and unequivocal message, I'm gonna say one thing, fuck Trump. The expletive-laden declaration was met with resounding applause from the crowd, signaling a groundswell of support for De Niro's sentiment. Fortunately, 
law enforcement agencies were able to intercept several other packages before they reached their intended recipients, which included key Democrats like former President Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton. The perpetrator behind these acts of terror, Caesar Sayok, was ultimately apprehended and sentenced to 20 years behind bars. However, the incident served as a stark reminder of the volatile political climate and the real dangers posed by extremism and radicalization. For De Niro, the experience was deeply unsettling, thrusting him into a position of vulnerability and fear. The chilling realization that he had been targeted for his outspoken criticism of Trump underscored the dangerous consequences of political divisiveness and rhetoric. Despite the inherent risks, De Niro remained resolute in his commitment to speaking truth to power, refusing to be silenced by intimidation or threats. In the aftermath of the incident, De Niro seized the opportunity to leverage his platform for advocacy and awareness. Ahead of the midterm elections in November, he issued a powerful statement urging Americans to exercise their right to vote. I thank God no one's been hurt, and I thank the brave and resourceful security and law enforcement people for protecting us, De Niro remarked. There's something more powerful than bombs, and that's your vote. People must vote. In November 2018, Robert De Niro found himself navigating yet another challenging chapter in his life as news broke of his separation from his second wife of over 20 years. Grace Hightower. The announcement sent shockwaves through the entertainment world, shining a spotlight on the personal struggles of the celebrated actor. In a statement provided to People magazine, De Niro addressed the end of his marriage with a tone of solemn reflection. He acknowledged the difficult but necessary process of transitioning their relationship, emphasizing his respect and admiration for Hightower as a devoted mother to their two children, son Elliot and daughter Helen Grace. Despite the pain of parting ways, De Niro appealed for privacy and respect as they navigated the complexities of co-parenting and forging new roles in their lives. The dissolution of De Niro and Hightower's marriage quickly escalated into a contentious legal battle, marked by acrimony and financial disputes. According to reports from The Independent, De Niro's lawyer, Caroline Krauss, painted a picture of the actor's financial burden, alleging that he had been compelled to accept undesirable acting roles in order to meet Hightower's lavish lifestyle demands. Krauss's remarks offered a glimpse into the underlying tensions and disagreements that had plagued the former couple's relationship, shedding light on the complexities of their financial arrangements and lifestyle choices. The assertion that De Niro had been coerced into taking on projects he found unsatisfactory underscored the sacrifices he had made in the name of financial stability and familial obligations. When does he get the opportunity to not take every project that comes along and not work six-day weeks, 12-hour days so he can keep pace with Ms. Hightower's thirst for Stella McCartney? Krauss lamented, encapsulating the frustrations and pressures faced by De Niro in his personal and professional life. The stark reminder of mortality. He could get sick tomorrow, and the party's over. Served as a sobering realization of the impermanence of wealth and success. The protracted legal battle finally came to a conclusion in 2021, with the couple's prenuptial agreement serving as the guiding framework for the settlement. Despite the acrimony that had characterized their divorce proceedings, the terms of the prenup were upheld, providing clarity and resolution to the long-standing dispute. According to reports from Page Six, Hightower received a substantial settlement, including $6 million to purchase a new home and half of the proceeds from the sale of their $20 million house. In addition to the lump sum payment and property division, Hightower was entitled to annual alimony payments of $1 million from De Niro. The settlement reflected a compromise between the former spouses, allowing both parties to move forward with their lives while providing for the financial well-being of Hightower and their children. Following the resolution of the divorce, 
De Niro embarked on a new chapter in his life, finding love and companionship with his girlfriend Tiffany Chen. In 2023, the actor welcomed his seventh child, signaling a fresh start and a renewed sense of optimism for the future. Despite the challenges and heartaches of the past, De Niro emerged from the ordeal with resilience and grace, ready to embrace the possibilities that lay ahead. The tragic loss of Robert De Niro's grandchild, 19-year-old actor Leandro De Niro Rodriguez, sent shockwaves through the De Niro family and beyond, casting a pall of sorrow over their New York City home. The news of Leandro's untimely passing on July 2, 2023, reverberated with profound sadness, leaving loved ones grappling with the inexplicable loss of a cherished family member. In the wake of Leandro's death, his mother, Drena De Niro, took to Instagram to share her grief with the world. In a heartbreaking post, she penned a poignant tribute to her beloved son, her words imbued with a raw and unfiltered expression of love and loss. I don't know how to live without you, she wrote, her anguish palpable in every syllable. But I'll try to go on and spread the love and light that you so made me feel in getting to be your mama. The outpouring of support and condolences from friends, family, and fans offered a glimmer of solace amidst the overwhelming grief. Messages of love and sympathy flooded social media platforms as people from all walks of life came together to honor Leandro's memory and offer comfort to those left behind. For Robert De Niro, the loss of his grandchild was a devastating blow, shattering the illusion of invincibility and reminding him of the fragility of life. Despite his stature as a Hollywood icon, De Niro grappled with the same pain and heartache that afflicts us all in the face of tragedy. In a candid and anguished statement, Drena disclosed that Leandro had fallen victim to the insidious dangers of fentanyl-laced pills sold to him by an individual who was fully aware of the lethal nature of the drugs. Someone sold him fentanyl-laced pills that they knew were laced, yet still sold them to him, she revealed, her words echoing with a potent mix of sorrow and outrage. So for all these people still thing around selling and buying this, my son is gone forever. The revelation sent shockwaves through the De Niro family and beyond casting a harsh spotlight on the devastating impact of the opioid crisis sweeping the nation. As the tragic circumstances of Leandro's death came to light, authorities launched a swift and determined investigation into those responsible for supplying the lethal drugs. In a development that underscored the gravity of the situation, a woman named Sophia Haley Marks was apprehended by law enforcement authorities facing three federal narcotics charges in connection with Leandro's death. According to reports from AP News, prosecutors alleged that Marks had supplied the drugs that ultimately led to Leandro's fatal overdose, marking a grim chapter in the ongoing battle against drug trafficking and substance abuse. Amidst the turmoil and anguish, Robert De Niro broke his silence, offering a heartfelt statement to the Daily Mail as he mourned the loss of his beloved grandson. I'm deeply distressed by the passing of my beloved grandson, Leo, De Niro expressed, his grief palpable in every word. We're greatly appreciative of the condolences from everyone. We ask that we please be given privacy to grieve our loss of Leo. What do you think about the tragedies that Robert De Niro had to go through? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.